giving people yeah. a heart attack at the last spot. <laughs> Got the job done. You can't help but like him, though, can you? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Anti Up episode 10. Can you believe it? 10 weeks we've been doing this, or this is the 10th week we've been doing it. Nine, never was good at maths. Anywho, the ticker bar is back. There'll be names of horses that will be running probably from tomorrow onwards up to Sunday. We've got some entries that are in there. It's not like fully action packed this week coming up in the weekend, but there are some. Yeah, so some key races that we need to be focusing on. We've obviously had racing last weekend. I'd say similarly, been some races we need to discuss, but maybe not so much key towards Cheltenham. Um, we've already got our selections picked. We've recorded this a little bit earlier than we normally would do because we haven't been faffing about. I'm I'm buzzing to get this one up on the slip. I know Matt is confident about his little view as well, so it should be quite good. But before we move into that, we do need to discuss what's happened. And then what's coming up for the weekend. And I promise now, because we've reached the 1,000 subscribers and I can start doing this beautiful little live content, I'm going to talk less because I think Matt's the reason those subscribers have got over 1,000. But before I allow him in, no, I will. Matt, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, really enjoying the lockdown again. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I'm enjoying the racing, mate, and looking forward to seeing uh, two or three of them, especially this weekend. Envoy, the nah. big boy. Yeah. yeah, Envoy, the big boy, innit? And it's good as well, like you said, obviously it's rubbish with lockdown and all that sort of stuff, but I'm ever the optimist when it comes to this sort of thing now, because it's the, well, it's technically it's the third time, but it feels a lot different than it did from the first time round. Yeah. But nine weeks today until the festival starts, so timing-wise, perfect, innit? Let's get those numbers right down, just in time for Cheltenham. I mean, we're not going to be able to go, are we? But as long as it's on, that's the main thing. And also, because it's nine weeks to go, we're more than halfway from when we started this to the festival. It's just like we've probably got six weeks of decent racing, and then it's going to calm down. That is soon going to fly around, isn't it? So, speaking of it flying around, I was going to let you talk for a bit. Last weekend's action, Paul Nichols was just boovering up left, right, and centre. Where do we start? Um, McFabulous was was impressive, wasn't he? Um, over two mile five, more of his, more of his trip again. Um, He's not going to go to, to Cheltenham, I wouldn't have thought, um, but very, very impressive uh, nonetheless. I saw a few people giving um, Harry Cobden a hard time for his ride, but I just think he, he knew he had the best sauce under him and, and was quite clearly uh, uh, well clear of the rest in the end, wasn't he? So you can't help but be impressed with him there. That's it, yeah. I think he was a bit critical of himself after as well, but then... I don't know, like you don't really want to potentially be going out wide around Kempton, but I, I, like I looked and just thought it was ice cool from him because yeah. rather than panicking and thinking I'm on the outside, so I think that Thomas Darby slipped up the inner and thinking, oh, I need to do something with him. Like you say, he knew he had tanks of horse under him. Like I, I, I did back McFabulous. I didn't think that that was a, like, I was never worried. I didn't think at any point that he'd given him a particularly poor ride just because the horse was tanking. If the horse obviously had got beat, you probably could have turned back and said, oh, he, it got done there. But, yeah, it was an impressive performance, wasn't it? But didn't look the strongest of races, I thought. And like you say, he's going to be entry bound. Does make the British stairs look even better, though, for the old time Hill Paisley Park boost. So, boom. What else? Because he had, what did he have, seven timer, Paul Nichols? I mean, it's not just about him, but there must have been a couple more of his you liked. Master Tommy Tucker, giving people yeah. a heart attack at the last spot. <laughs> Got the job done. You can't help but like him, though, can you? He's. If, He's a classy, classy performer, but he just gives you the odd, the odd heart attack. Um, Imperial Aura still in early, probably uh, spot the race a little bit. Not the greatest prep if he's going to go for the Ryanair. And to be fair, it didn't even sound like it was definite that the Ryanair was going to be the target afterwards, did it? So that's not ideal. But yeah, you, you've got to be impressed with Master Tommy Tucker anyway, despite him trying to chuck, uh, chuck the jockey at the last. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I like Master Tommy Tucker. And because Nichols was going so well, you could see there was bits of money and stuff coming for him. But like you say, even though in Paul, we're obviously going out early, ruining the race a bit, but you've still got all those fences to go around just waiting for Marty Tommy Tucker to Tommy Tucker to potentially make a mistake. And at the last as well, like another day, Cobden would have been flicked off, yeah. wouldn't he? And it would have just been a bit of a farce. There was decent racing over at Chepstow as well. Um, secret reprieve winning the Welsh National as he probably should have done was thrown in when he despite the weight cloth saddle bit girth moving around talk after I think the trainers mentioned in the National Hunt Chase do you reckon he's got a chance in that if he went there? Um, I suppose he wasn't on my radar for that uh, prior to the race but I suppose he's got to come into the thinking now hasn't he uh, so impressive um, 
he won't be top of my list, but he, might, he must have a must have a chance in that now. Mm. I think the interesting thing with him is the handicappers only put him up because he was he was running off a light and mark because of the entry stage all that sort of stuff. I think he only officially went up another two pounds, but it was already due to go up. I can't remember what it was eight tens or that. So he's only gone up a couple more. I, I would be semi tempted if I was the trainer to be thinking under mid like mid one forties, maybe like Kim Muir or mm. Ultima something like that. I don't know. So. You could see you could see the case for him for an astronaut chase. Obviously, he'd be going in there with the best form, arguably, but interesting all the same. And then obviously also at Chepter, we had the Adonis, not the Adonis, the finale, juvenile hurdle. Nasalam got done by Adagio. What did you make of it? It just makes me think that the Irish juveniles are, are much better than than uh, than ours, Dave, to be honest with you. Um Duff Coat had the beating of the Adagio last time, didn't he? Even though it, Adagio probably hit the front too soon, didn't he, in that one? But um, mm. I think Gornelli would be confident that he's got at least one better than Duffel Coat, probably two, and probably feels like he's got uh, our juveniles covered at the minute, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think I think Nassalam, like Adagio almost felt like he got first run on him in the running. And there was like Nassalam had enough time to get back and go past him. He's going to run trials day at Cheltenham. So I'm, I'm not like, completely and utterly throwing him fully out of the water yet because um, oh, they probably would have learned from it and he had a little bit of a setback didn't he before mm. he only and he only confirmed for this race because he was able to recover from that so he was, that was always going to be ending as well that's slam, wasn't he? Mm. And, and it was it was wasn't like terribly bad ground considering the, the weather and all that sort of stuff that happened but pacey wise in there it didn't look very consistent um i i would like I, yeah i don't i definitely think the irish are miles ahead but I wouldn't be surprised if Nasser Lamb stepped up on that on trials day. He obviously like massively needs to, but that's where I think I'd want to find out a bit more of him. There wasn't really much else over the rest of the weekend. I mean, there's probably other ones that people would like us to talk about, but our show and it will talk about what we want. Um, Bear Gills, obviously, can't really jump. I can't believe the price it is for the bag yeah. anymore. It just makes me feel slightly offended. He was thrown in in that handicap, and he won like he was thrown in. Let's just stop there. That's yeah. all that needs to be said, really, isn't it? Agreed, mate. Yeah, at the prices, especially, I couldn't be having him for, for a Ballymore at this stage, to be honest with you. Balmy. And I don't, I don't know whether it's because it was a slow weekend or what it was. And again, like, obviously, I'm all about Cheltenham. People do talk about it saying it ruins it for the festival, well, ruins it for the national season. Everyone wants to talk about Cheltenham after every result comes in. It's funny how when it gets to Christmas time and there's actual trials for Cheltenham, people say that. Then when you get weekends like last weekend, where they're not typically going to be great trials going forward to Cheltenham, and a horse wins a handicap hurdle, and all of a sudden everyone's touting him for Cheltenham, that's when you're going berserk. Yeah. Barmy, but never mind, you watch, you'll probably go and bolt up now, won't he? We've got good racing coming up this weekend, but we have got the luxury that the Lawler of Nace, mm -hmm. the slain of his hurdles, as it's officially called, um, didn't run Sunday, did it? It runs tomorrow. Your selection that was a bit of a... Slalom lining through that race didn't get declared, but never mind. It looks a proper race. Bob Ollinger, you put him up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So Bob Ollinger's on people's slips. Bob Ollinger, the Henry de Bromo comments coming out are basically like this horse is about to show he's going to finally throw down his ability. I think he'll be better on some slightly better ground as well. How do you see the race? Because it looks from comments and vibes of a few of the other trainers as well, it sounds like it could be more competitive than him just bolting up. Yeah, I think it'll be competitive. Like as you say, Dave, I'd like seeing him on on better ground if possible. But he probably needs to be winning or going very, very close to to be a Ballymore uh, contender. But they are talking up this Blue Lord out there. Who's, um, probably like uh, a lot of Willies probably needed his run first time out. Um, the second didn't uh, advertise the farm today. Did I? I can't remember who it was now. Julie Stowaway didn't exactly advertise the farm for Blue Lord um, today. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd, you'd think it's it's going to be a, a, a strong race and hopefully Bob Ollinger gets the job done. I'd, I'd be fairly confident he can, he can get the job done, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I'm not... I've been... I think I've probably been like critical of Bob Ollinger in most of the times we talked about him. I feel like this is the sort of race that, like, as much as I'm, like, knock him a bit, I, I feel like he is the one to beat in here. And this mm -hmm. is the sort of race where I feel like if he just won this, I'd be feeling in my head... Yeah, that just shows the level that he is. I'd probably knock the performance down a little bit. I'd probably say if he goes and wins it three or three lengths or more tomorrow, then I'd be happy to start holding my hands up and say, hang on a minute, I think this probably could be a proper horse because he, he definitely does need better ground. But I do think he should be 
comfortably winning the race, to be honest. And I think I did touch on something like Ashdale Bob as well. Like there could be horses in this that might help us for pointers towards the potato race yeah. later down the line. Also, we've got the um, nice novice chase. I know a few people have been commenting about some of the runners that were in there, the likes of Blackbow, Captain Guinness, they're saying potential big prices for an Arkle. Shishkin wins the Arkle. Anergamine's going to run in this race. I guess more than anything, they're going to probably find out whether he is a proper two-miler or do you feel like me that they're not going to find him a proper two-miler because he's just going to spank Captain Guinness and Blackbow anyway? Or not? Yeah, I think, think he'll probably win. Whether or not he's a, a two-miler, I'm not sure. that. The, the talk about him like like they're surprised to find that he could jump so well and that makes him into a two miler. But I I don't necessarily see that as the angle they should necessarily go. The, whichever way they went, they'd have to meet a, an absolute superstar, wouldn't they? In either Shishkin or or in Viola. And if if they think he's better over further, then his jumping is just as much of an asset over two and a half miles as is over two. But I mean, I suppose if he if he bolts up um, tomorrow over two miles, then he probably will be their alcohol horse, won't he? Similarly, with, with Blackbow did the same, but I think I'd take it any any I mean at the at the moment of uh, the three of those, Blackbow, Captain Guinness. Yeah. Do you feel like it's maybe the time of year where, obviously at the start of the season, if you said to Willie, who are your potential Arkel, Marsh, um, um, like RSA horses, it's getting to the time of year now where they might not be the same horses as you would have said at the start of the season, whether it's injuries, poor performances, and now, like you say, I know Gamine's not going to go and take on Envoy. Well, yeah. he might. He's probably not going to take on Envoy. They're not probably going to want to stick him in an RSA because they've got the likes of a monk's fish there. Although we did touch on the fact that Willie will run more than one horse in a race. Do you feel like maybe because they haven't got an Arkle horse at the moment and they're looking at the divisions and thinking that's probably the next best race to try and attack, maybe that's why they're forcing him over two? Exactly. I, I think if they'd, you'd have had the likes of maybe Classical Dream, Unaccepted... Alexe Dane, who all probably would have been more likely Arkle contenders had they been A, fit and well and been seen. And Enigamine uh, would have then been looking more like a marsh horse, I think. But you, you, you don't know, do you? I mean, he, the, the test is tomorrow and that's probably why they've put, they've let, uh, they're put they going to let Blackbow and Enigamine uh, run against each other, to be honest with you, though. Yeah. I'm just, I, I, I personally just view it as... You, you could get a good performance from any of the three in there. I, well, I, wouldn't, I couldn't have Blackbow of anyone's money. If Blackbow wins it well, then done. Yeah. got no chance of winning an Arkle. I don't really like Captain Guinness, but again, you know, the way that he ran in the Supreme, all those bits and pieces, you could see him going quite well. And Anergamine, I could see him going quite well. Like, I think Anergamine is a good horse, but I think it just, we have to, I will be anyway, take it with a pinch of salt, the performance, because if something does bolt up, I'm not sure that there's as much depth in there as it potentially looks like when we just say the horses' names. When we say the names, it sounds like you've got a clash of three proper horses, but Blackboat failed to, to prove himself, really. Captain Guinness obviously has, has had issues, a bit of an older horse. Um, Anergamine, the older horse, sorry, we started over hurdles, probably they might have saved his... I know they wanted to get him quick over fences, but maybe they would have saved his chasing had they had something else. I don't know. I just feel like these aren't the premium players for something like an Arkle. And again, Shishkin wins it anyway, so... Stop looking anywhere near. Right, that is enough talking about tomorrow's stuff. We need to look forward to the weekend. We haven't even started about the weekend stuff yet. So again, I said at the start of the show that the weekend race in this weekend has got some good, nice, tidy races in there. And there'll be definitely some pointers towards Cheltenham. Um, more so than last weekend, I feel. But there's only really two meetings that I'm majorly interested in. Weatherby on Saturday and then... Um, Hunterstown Sun. Fairy House has got Quilixolos running on Saturday, worth mentioning it, or he should be running. Yep. But Weatherby, Warwick. anything standing out to you at Weatherby? At Warwick. <laughs> on Saturday. No. What do I keep clicking on? I'll keep saying Weatherby tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it's Warwick, mate. Definitely Warwick, isn't it? It's, do you know, it's because every time I click on cards, mm. I see Weatherby, but above it, I see Fairy House. And because yeah. Fairy House is on Saturday and Weatherby starts with a W, this is the sort of amateur we're working with, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Warwick, you corrected me about 10 times before we started recording this. <laughs> yeah. Right, Warwick, the Leamington Novices Hurdle, Grade 2. We've got the Hampton Novices Chase, the Grade 2. I need to shut up because I've already ruined this for most people. And... Um, yeah, no, the, the novice chase over three miles um, looks a decent race, doesn't it? Um, next destination you've already put up, 
uh, his favourite, isn't he? But I'm really looking forward to see how Dickie Diver goes in this and um, and then see what, what that means for, for going on to the festival. The number of ways he can, could go. Um, whether or not he'll win this, I don't know. I don't, it depends on the way they're going to campaign him, doesn't it? Um, you can see Austin working there because you know I, I like him and tempted to put him up a few times. But it, it's, just, it's just finding finding his target that's the difficult thing for, for Dickie Diver, isn't it? Um, but I was really impressed with his, his comeback run. I'm really looking forward to seeing him on, on Saturday, see which way he goes. Mm. And that is a it's, like, it's, it's a nice race, that is, grade two. I don't really know off the top of my head anything that's won it in recent years that's gone on to success at Cheltenham. I mean, I could probably get up on Wikipedia to help, but if it's not flying off my tongue off the top, then we might not be looking potentially at festival winners out there, but there's definitely nice horses. Next destination, like you mentioned, I've already put them up for any race. Happy Go Lucky was one of my horses to follow. Really excited to see them two going up against each other. Dicky Diver, like you say, he's been a bit of the wise guys thing over the last few weeks, and you shot yourself in the foot a little bit over Christmas when you bottled it, not putting him up, but We've been to and fro a little bit about him, haven't we? I feel like you're probably never going to put him up now. He's one of those that my two penny on him is, for what it's worth, for all the people that are any racing him and everyone's and their dogs putting him up. He was a good price for any race just because he's going to be a talked up horse. He's going to shorten. He needed a couple of runs. This one, hopefully, sat in another one to get into the handicaps and obviously need the three. Potentially could go down the four mile route. I know that was one you attempted to steal by this week. 33 is available with Bet365. Like OK Corral, he ran in this race, yeah. but obviously Derek Connor was able to come over and ride it. But like, there's so many different ways this horse could potentially go. I'm just not overly sold on the horse. Eight year old now, lightly raced, it was an OK comeback run. Obviously, we'd like to see what he does now after. But I, I don't know. I just wonder whether he's going to be a bit too obvious. But then maybe I'm saying that because everyone else is saying it, and I'm not. Yeah, no, I, li- I like him, Dave. I, mean, I thought his comeback run, I thought his jumping's real economical. He's low over him. Um... Yeah, I do like oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to you too much about him, but I, I, no, I do like him. I mean, obviously, he's still got it to prove, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes Saturday. I am putting him up, have I? So, got to leave him alone. No, when, when I've just said get a room to you, though, it makes me wonder about his name, whether they've slipped one through the net. Old Muff Diver, <laughs> old Sticky Diver. Fiddler on the roof's in there as well, speaking of uh, old Muff Diver. And if the cat is that they're all. They're all uh, innuendos now, aren't they? If the cat fits is in there. Kiltini Briggs, that's not an innuendo. Like it's a, He's the outsider of the field. I'm not saying he's going to be going to win this, but he's 140 rated. He's getting five pounds from the uh, next destination in there. Like If all of these lined up, it's a pretty tasty little race, isn't it? So they'll definitely be pointless towards the festival, handicaps, all that sort of thing, potentially. Looks a really nice race. What do you make of the Leamington, the great two novice hurdle? Um, let me get it up, Dave. Again, another innuendo. That's the problem with this episode. Now I've absolutely I've ruined myself, haven't I? <laughs> well, I'll start off with the Leamington where you're getting up then. I'm I'm semi-disappointed with this. Tends yeah. to be a race every year that I'm hoping there'll be something in that's gonna be like maybe a maybe an Albert Bartlett type, maybe a Bally Morley type, but there's nothing particularly jumping out at me. There could be something that comes out of this that might end up being something that we could think about as the British Albert Bartley horse, because I don't feel like we've got too many of them over here. And although the ratings wouldn't really suggest it, there probably there's probably some okay like type horse in it. I quite like um, Optimized Prime for Ben Paul, and even though he's 128, he's one of them I look at and think handicap hurdle him. Captain Morgs, another one 128. You just look at him and think off that mark, surely handicap hurdle. Even Admiral off of 132, you look at it and think surely handicap hurdle. But they're running in this grade two. When is going to get 12 and a bit grand? I know the skeletons. I think Midnight Rivers is a lot better now than he was his last couple of runs. Obviously, he got beat at Cheltenham before, didn't he? Lord of Carrick for Oddie Murphy. I know he's a horse that he's always quite liked. Make me a believer for Pike. Probably looks like fairly good after winning the last day. What do you What do you make of it? Do you like anyone in your radar? It's It's one of them. Just it's a bit of a mare race to me. It's a bit. There's nothing that really jumps out. That something would have to really bolt up to be of interest in. Um, in one of the novice hurdles, wouldn't they? Like I say, maybe something for, for a handicap, but nothing nothing stands out really, Dave, in that for me, to be honest with you. Mm, see, I'm looking at this thinking, because it because it's it does it looks substandard for a grade two, probably sounds a bit harsh, but I think it does. And I, I do quite like this race. I, I did do some stuff on it years ago, but I think Will It Be Caught maybe won this before it went and won the Baddy Moor. There's been horses that have placed in this that have gone and won an Albert Bar or won this and gone there. So it, it can be quite a good trial. 
I, I just I wonder whether, although on paper it looks a bit like now that maybe it's going to be a bit substandard, you, I feel like you're going to get two or three of these that are going to pull clear, and I'm hoping it's just two. Um, and you know, you get it almost every year. Big Sammy won it a few years ago. There was a few that were in line with that, and then he just looked real good. I'm just I'm just hoping that's going to happen. A couple of them are going to tank clear, and then they'll be so far clear of everything else that because they're all much of a muchness, they're probably all around about 130s horses. If any two do go well clear then I think you could be happy to say that, that they probably are like the 140s horses and you need to be in the 150s to win a novice at Cheltenham. I, I feel like it's like I wouldn't have an opinion pre-racing it. I think Ad Rimmel is the right fav, but I'll be very keen to watch it and see if anything does pull clear. And this will be the sort of race as well where I'll be seeing how they're travelling. This will definitely be a race where I'll be having anti-post um, markets open on bookmakers' websites for some of these horses. Some of them won't even be quoted. But just to just see what, um, like if, if a few go clear, it might be a pinch a bit of value on some of them. But well, I'm, I'm more excited about the race than uh, you are. Yeah, mate. Sunday, over in Ireland, should be really the highlight of the weekend, shouldn't it? Because we've got the Moscow Flyer Grade 2, which mm, I'm semi-disappointed with this year so far. But we've also got, oh, this is the race I'm proper buzzing about. And I'm buzzing about it for the wrong reasons, probably. We've also got the... Uh, Grade three novices chase where Envoy Alain probably going to bottle it, I think. But you think Envoy Alain should be running in there. What, what do you make of the two races in Ireland? I'll let you talk about the uh, novices chase and I'll let you go on to the Moscow flyer before I say anything about either of them. Envoy, I, I think he'll still win it, even giving away lumps away, going right handed. I just think he's his head and shoulders, Dave. I really do. I think he'll, he'll just win regardless. I don't think he'll bottle it either. I think this has been the plan. Um, and I think they'll they'll stick to it and, and they'll go with him. I don't think they're scared of anyone with him, and I certainly don't think they'll they'll be scared of a steering falange. Is it, don't, don't get me wrong, I do really like a steering falange, especially going right-handed. But I just think he'll he'll bolt up, mate, and we'll we'll see him cut again and onto the marsh, win the marsh. We're all in in Vegas this time next year. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe I should jump in now before we go to Moscow Fly. It makes sense, doesn't it? Well, I just look at this. Like, I want to see. I want to see Andy Dufresne run as well. Mm. Definitely want to see him go in there. But Gordon's got um, other options in the race as well. There's, there's, like, it, it's a Grade Three at the end of the day. But obviously, with Envoy Lamb being in there, it's as good as being a Grade One. Like you say, you have to give it a bit of weight away. So that's something that people need to take into consideration. Got Chatham Street Lad that won at Cheltenham. All of a sudden, people are talking about him. Ooh, outside live chance for a marsh. Well, no, but we'll find out a little bit. Asterian Fall on, like, I, lo I love Envoy Land almost as much as the next man. When the next man's you, I don't love him as much. But, I don't know. I, it's just, it's, it's stupid. It's not massively based on anything. I just, I remember his bumper when Abracadabras ran out and I looked at him and I just thought, this horse is beatable. Everything he's done since, I just keep looking at him thinking, oh, he's surely he's still beatable. But that voice just gets quieter and quieter and quieter in the back of my head. Then you see him chasing this season. You just think Mickey Mouse race, Mickey Mouse race. Like, come on, give the people what they want. Put him up against a horse. And obviously... It's the other trainers running scared of Envoy more than anything. Mm -hmm. Asterian Fourlonge, like I'm, I'm buzzing to see him go against him. The fact that it's right-handed suits Asterian Fourlonge. We know that Asterian Fourlonge has been round here. He didn't fall when he ran in here on his chase debut. Of course, he's got like a bit of weight to find with Envoy Lamb, but. Like they'll, they'll have obviously the spring festivals in mind, all that sort of stuff, wouldn't they? But I just, I just want like. This is like a, this is the time to get a scalp in it for us doing four launch. I, I reckon, I, I feel like it's going to be a lot closer than people are giving it credit for. And I, I genuinely do think that steering four launch has a chance of beating Envoy, not just because of the weight thing. If they run off levels, I think they could. But he is a horse that fell last time out. Envoy jumps immaculately, and it's like you say, Envoy's probably just going to bolt up, and then it'll be shorter price for Cheltenham. I, I just, I honestly do just think that if Steering four launch goes in here, he is. Of all the horses we've got over well, all the different trips, like Monkfish, I don't think it's good enough to step back in trips to take on Envoy at two and a half. I like the big getaway, but I don't think he'd be touching Envoy at two and a half. Mm -hmm. Easy work, obviously, the ill fate, and I think could have been one that could have competed against him. Shishkin, we don't really know enough about him stepping up. We know he won the Sydney Banks before, but you'd think Shishkin could be like his nearest pursuer. 
Asterian fall on to come fourth in the Supreme. I know there was fallers and stuff in there, but to do what he did, jump in the way that he did at Cheltenham, clearly shows that the horse is very, very talented. I know he fell at Christmas. He's won course and distance here over fences. I just feel like he... I, I think I'm saying that he's probably one of the horses in training, I think, that would be that was, would be capable of giving them voice something to think about. And I'm just buzzing they're going to go against each other. Because because if, if they both jump a clean round and Envoy spanks this horse, and mm. en- Envoy is like... Well, like I mean, everyone already knows it, but then, then he is like a proper special horse. You, you are right. It's going to be a test. It obviously is going to be a test. It's probably going to be as much of a test as he'll, he'll get in the in the marsh. To be honest with you, Agreed. but I, I just start seeing him getting beat, Dave. I really don't. I just start seeing him getting beat. But I, I like I say I do love him. I absolutely love him. So I don't. I don't think. I don't think anyone will. But then what will happen is it will get nearer the time when people start looking at it and thinking about stuff, and a few people might start suggesting to take him on. Look, I I would say. If someone put a gun to my head and said, if you get this decision wrong, you're going to die, I would say Envoy will win the race. Mm-hmm. But I think I'd die a happy man if you got beat. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to die. But, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it, I, I just, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me as much as it would shock everybody else if I steer in mm-hmm. four-launch beaten. Anywho, too much about a race and a result that's not going to happen. Moscow Flyer, grade two. We have had some nice winners in the past. Phoenix to G recently. Um, you go back a little while, Willie Mullins was doing it with the Riki horse that did go and win the Supreme. More recently, it's not been as good a marker. Obviously, appreciate it heads the Supreme market. Lots of people are looking for other horses to think, oh, what else could there be in there? Lots of people think he's a horse probably better over further. So I think we were probably hoping to see some clues, maybe some indication from Mullins yard more than anything of what he might be thinking of, st- thinking, thinking of sticking in the Supreme with him. Ganapathy goes in here for uh, Donnelly and power of pause for same connections is entered. Whether he's going to go or not, I don't know. And then there is echoes in rain as well. But I mean, I wouldn't think that that would be a horse we should be thinking about as potential uh, potential supreme horse. Although he did win impressively the last day. What, what do you make of the three Willie Mullins runners? Like if they all, like, regardless of whether they all run or not, mm-hmm. do you reckon any of those could be? Supreme horses? It's difficult to tell. You. Get, Ganapathy um, was fairly cosy on debut, to be honest with you. It reminds me a little bit of Blue Lord on debut, um, who they've now started sort of talking up a little bit. Um, you just wonder how many of them needed the run for Willie as well at that time. So th- this is the acid test, isn't it? If, if, he, if, um, if he did need the run on his debut, on his hurdle debut, then you could see him step up. The, the one I'm looking forward to see is, is Magic Tricks, to be honest with you, Dave, from... Um, of Gordon Elliott, mm. so that's the one I'm I'm most looking for. And I'd like to have seen a bit better ground because I think they've mentioned before that um, he's quite a speedy horse, isn't he? And, and the better the, uh, the the sound of the ground, the better. Um, but yeah, so the, like I said, it's, there doesn't look to be a superstar in there, does there? But um, it's another one you're looking forward to that if, if one does um, step up, and they're putting themselves firmly in that supreme picture. Um, but as thing stands, there's nothing that stands out as a superstar until they prove it uh, at the weekend, to be honest with you. But Magic, Magic Tricks and, and Ganapathy would be the two you're looking to probably step up and be potential superstars. Ooh, like it. So I, I mean, I do quite like Power of Pause. And you know, I go on about all the time my Albert Bartlett, I like the two-mile speed mm-hmm. stuff of it. It's kind of thinking of what they're doing, appreciate it, that Power of Pause could end up being one that... Um, might end up stepping up in grip. I just think it's interesting when we've looked at the, especially the novice hurdles, because I've been trying to dig around for Ballymore and Albert Bartlett selections. When you look at those those um, divisions and you're starting to try and picture the pieces together, and we're looking at stuff and we're thinking we've got a fairly good idea of what's happening in Supreme Ballymore ish on like all known form to now, but we're still half thinking something's going to come out and, and like maybe blow things apart or like something is gonna something is gonna do that that's a fact something's gonna happen where we're gonna all of a sudden start thinking all oh, this horse could be doing this we've got the Lord of nace tomorrow haven't we magic tricks was entered in that first time didn't get declared so that was two and a half miler so where you touched on probably wants the better ground stamina might come into play for him but we've got the Lord of nace tomorrow bob Ollinger's in there blue lord now both of those you would think would probably be taking up the first two places in that particular race but if there's any sort of a bit of a shock in there then that changes the complexity of the Ballymore a little bit, makes Brave Man's game look a bit better. Then you've got this Moscow Flyer on the Sunday where potentially something in there could 
maybe make uh, waves towards the Supreme or could end up shaping like in bad ground. They might want a little bit further. Um, like, not that it's going to happen, but this power of pause could absolutely dot up in the Moscow flyer. And all of a sudden, people are starting to think, do they stick appreciate in the bunny more because power of pause is a quicker horse? And then we'll have to maybe wait for the Dublin Race Festival to find out of it. Just feel like as much as it's only two races we're talking about, I feel like there's going to be a lot of information to be gathered. Probably what's going to happen is Bob Ollinger's just, just going to dot up and then Ganapathy is going to win by a few lengths. And then we knew that before it all started. But it would just be interesting to see what happens, I think, because it could blow things apart. Like if Magic Trick goes and dots up, then he'll obviously shorten up for something like a Supreme. Ganapathy, like you say, we probably would have needed the run. I still like fire attack, man. It's absurd. Yeah. I've been pants so far this season. But Joseph O'Brien's finally in some form now. I had a couple of winners today. I just... I just think looking at it before race, which is why I always try and take stock of this. And this is why I like talking horses. I like writing things down. Just feel like you need to take stock of a race before it happens. And you need to say to yourself, when you're looking at it, am I really excited about lots of the field? Am I excited about one or two? And what do I expect to happen? Not only from a punting perspective, but what do I think could happen? Who might run well? Who might need further in future? Who might want different ground? Because when the result happens, if you can go back and say, oh, I kind of thought these ones were much of a muchness and they finished fairly close to each other, regardless of how visually impressive someone might have been in the finish, or they might have made a couple of mistakes and looked like they could have run better, you have to consider, I thought it was going to be a mishmash race. That's how it's ended up. It was what it was. If something goes and absolutely bolts up and you thought before the race, this looks red hot, then you know that that's a proper horse. But likewise, if something bolts up and you thought it was a fairly weak race, then you can't get too carried away. I just think this, I think it's good, good couple of, well, good few races this week and a good handful of races. And I definitely think for next week when we're talking about um, these results going forward to Cheltenham, they will definitely have provided a few more well, talking points, I guess. Yeah, definitely. You always think you've got a handle on, on a, a division diet and then something will, will shake it up. And the one we haven't mentioned in there, David, um, was Master McShee. So that's a, a nice one to have in there with the farm with Appreciate to see how the others stack up against him as well. So, um, if, if the others, you know, pull well clear of him after appreciated beating Cozley enough, didn't he, on, on his uh, first run this season. But it's nice to have him there as a, as a line through him as well, to be honest with you. Mm, definitely. Well, yeah, I think of that race as well. Like, ma magic Trick is definitely interesting. Power of Paws, definitely interesting. Ganapathy, definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. But like Monster, like Fire Attack, because Joseph O'Brien's in some form now, I expect a very... Decent one for him. I think he ran grade three, grade one the last day miles behind. Appreciate it. He, whether he goes and wins this and stamps himself down as a grade one horse, because I think he potentially could be at some point in the season, or whether he ends up being one of those in the background where you look at it and think, hang on a minute, I still think he's going to come on from it and he might be getting a mark after this handicap thing. I would say that he's one of the horses over the weekend that I think more than anything probably has fallen off a few people's radars because of those two spins. Now Joseph's back into bet form. I want him declared and I want to see how he goes. Yeah. Right, that's enough talking about what happened and what's coming up. We need to get on to selections. But before we do that, I've been waiting years to say this, we're just going to take a short commercial break. Right, maybe that worked. Maybe you skipped the ad. I don't know. But anyway, we are back now and we are firing in to week 10 selections. Can't remember how many we put up. I think I've banged in 15. A couple of them are dead. Matt needs some catching up. Unfortunately, he bottled it again this week with one of his selections. So it's just one from me and one from him. Rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. On three. Hut, hut, hut. Ah, blunt here. So, very simply, mine is the best selection anyway. Mine is coming out now. Mine is for a handicap. Now, you guys will know when I talk about stuff that I don't get too flashy with a handicap, especially not till final declarations. But I really fancy this horse. And a trainer comment came out recently in the week. I was a little bit annoyed thinking the price might not hold up, but it's still there or thereabouts. It is Mahayed for the Skeletons in the Patomps. Ooh, 20 to 1 it is. I think that's just general. Better freeze it to five, you can get the old cash out with it. He's already qualified. He's ended up a couple of times this weekend. I think he's got a spin at Market Razor and a Pants handicap. And then he's got another Potomac qualifier at Not Weather Be at Warwick. Um, I, I, I wish there was some sort of magical rule that if you get like qualified in multiple potential races, you get like a five length advantage. Or that's not quite how it pans out. But they've confirmed that's the race that he's going down to. He's going to. I think he's about 141 rated now. Um, 
because he's already qualified for the attempts, he could pretend, like, I don't know why he would go for the race again, unless they were going there to run so poorly that he gets a mark drop. I don't know. I just wonder whether now they're going to be running him to get marked down a little bit. Um, there's a loose thing that the owners are to do with attempts as well. So, like, owners sponsor thing. Not that's, like, a reason to back a horse. But he was obviously so good when he won the county a couple of years back. They fancied him last year as well to go really well in the county when St. Moir hacked up and Mohair was finished the race but finished very very slowly a mature horse now so you know it's the logical thing to do to step him up but they've stepped him up this season the three spins all of them have been pretty good runs the run behind you know what I mean Harry I mean he's old enough to smoke but he ran a good race um and then he's had the the, the race the time after where he got beat by come on Teddy the Noel Feely racing horse um now that is in the Potemps qualifier at Warwick as well so they'll be looking to get him qualified for the Potemps so loose form line tying in I just think my high ed we know what Scout was like with handicaps at Cheltenham we know what this horse is like as well at Cheltenham I think he's going to end up being the wise guy's tip I mean that's why I put him up the wise guy in it but 20 to 1 it's not going to happen on the day the only reason it wouldn't it would be any different or any worse surprise would be if he didn't make it to Cheltenham can't see that happening they're going to go for temps it just he's got to be on your slip 20 to 1 I think it's an absolute not a good thing in terms of it's like it's a bank that's going to go and win because we know the Irish have probably got the race by the nuts. But I think it's a, I think it's a pretty good bet. Twenties. I was expecting it still to be a bit shorter after Skelton's comments came out. So twenty to one, more high ed for the Potems. Matt. Yeah, can't argue with Matt. You know the target. Cheltenham form. It's going to be shorter. What's not to like? I've just played it. I've almost played it safe, and I. Just yeah. to look good, but I but I genuinely think he's got. I definitely think he's no. got a chance as well. And I think I think the step up in trip, all those sort of things suiting it. And I bang on about it. How much do I bang on about it? Two mile speed for three milers. I love it. And you don't. There's there's obviously lots of horses that don't do that. They just like sort of dower stairs. But I feel like Cheltenham, when you need that little bit of boost up the hill, you've got to have a bit of pace about you because you can get away with it in certain races, but other times. You can't. So like St. Wild when it won last year. I know that was counting over two miles, but the speed they fly up the hill in a handicap that is not lost when it comes to a three-mile race. So that's my selection. I can't remember any of that is for me in total. Matt, what are you putting up this week? I'm going for a handicap as well. I'm going for <laughs> conflated in the brown advisory plate. He runs against Envoy. He does. He runs against Envoy this weekend. Maybe. Well, we'll see. See if he gets declared. But yeah, it better not be. <laughs> yeah. But he's a horse that, that's, that's made a habit of that, Dave, to be fair, following around um, really good horses in, in decent races. Um, right from uh, his maiden hurdle days, um, where he didn't get off the mark till the third time of asking. Um, after, after his uh, maiden hurdle win, that's where it really became interesting the way the campaign because he, he finished third up to two mile, four in a grade two novice at Navan behind um, latest exhibition under Dufresne, which is obviously strong form. Yeah. He then went on to finish uh, fourth in the Lollas and Ace um, last year over two mile, four again behind Envoy Allen, Alexia Dene, Longhouse Poet. So that was obviously clearly a strong race with the Ballymore winner in there. Alexia Dene was uh, winning a really big race before uh, a steering for Longe. Uh, took him out in the Supreme. And then his final run of last season uh, was at, at the Dublin Racing Festival in the Grade 1 Novice Hurdle over two miles where he finished a well-beaten fourth behind a steering for Lange, easy work, Mount mm-hmm. Leinster. Really good horses again that he's, that he's following home and finished with a hurdle mark of 138 at the end of the season. He then began uh, this season in a beginner's chase at Punchestown over, over two mile one when he was well-beaten, um, albeit staying on behind uh, Darby Star in third. Mm-hmm. He then went to Punchestown in a beginner's chase over two mile four where he ran really well behind um, a steering for launch uh, to finish second six lengths behind him but he was jumping out to his um, to his right quite a bit which was giving away ground so I thought that was a really promising run. He then bolted up um, by 17 lengths at Navin over two mile four um, is the race that the big getaway flopped in. Um which a big getaway probably needed the run, but obviously that that reads that reads quite well. Um, now after the big getaway has gone and uh, and won himself since then, and then he took his entry in the Grade One Novels Hotel Chase at, at Leopardstown over over three miles at Christmas, which he was he was tailed off miles behind Monkfish and latest exhibition there, wasn't he? 
well, I think I think that's just a trip that, that tested stamina. When you when you look back at his um, point to point run, he ran well for a, a real long way there as well before fading. So I, I just think that the three miles is just too far for him. Mm. Um, the, he jumps really well, to be fair to him, but he does adjust left. And uh, Gordon Elliott said himself that um, the horse probably needs to go left handed, but it's not an issue at Cheltenham. And I think if anything, you can mark up his, his, his runs right handed behind uh, Steering Falange and, and Darva Star, to be fair to you. And then regarding the race itself, the last the last four winners of the of the plate have been novices. Three of the last five have been Irish after a long gap without the Irish winning. The last six were making a festival debut, and that all three of those are, are positives for conflated. He's obviously Gigginstown owned. Gigginstown runners came out on top with um Road to Respect and Empire Dirt in 2016, 2017, albeit not trained by Gordon Elliott. Then Gordon Elliott himself uh, took the race in 2018 with his storyteller, who, a bit like Conflated, missed the, the festivals um, the season before and then was tried in uh, graded uh, novice chases before dropping down to Handicap Company to, to win the race. Mm. And then Gordon Elliott said in the stable talk at the start of the season that um, he hoped he might be a black type horse and there might be a handicap to win on the way, which, which just further strengthens what my view that is right on that cusp between a, a graded horse and a high class handicapper. Um, so obviously he's, we don't know who's Mark yet, but you, you'd be hoping starting starting the season one three eight over hurdles, run, running in behind uh, decent horses. You're hoping it's going to be somewhere in the one forties still. Um, I expect this weekend if he runs a similar type of run to what we've seen before behind good horses, and then drop into handicap company in the plate at the festival. Jobs are good. I mean, it's genius, isn't it? <laughs> it I, sounds like on paper. <laughs> it, it does sound good on paper. And to be honest with you, mate, I like these types of horses because you're, you're, like, you're spot on. He's had, he's had plenty of racing. There's been plenty of opportunities to think, I was going to win a nice handicap with him. Yeah. Potentially last year, with the fact that the Spring Festival's got cut short, you never know whether they might have thought, let's go and win a nice handicap herder with him. And then he would have been chasing this season off of an increased mark. I mean, that's me just saying something that didn't happen, but you know, it could have happened. You could, like you say, the form that he's got, you would, you'd would fancy him off a handicap of 138 over there. Mm. When he comes over here with a bit of UK tax, like you say, the 140s, the run this weekend, like, could just be ideal, couldn't it? Just to mm -hmm. get another run into him, in behind those good horses, mm -hmm. quite easy to hide away in there. I like it. The other thing as well with him was when he when he was bumpering, because I remember him back then because I think I fancied him when he got battered by Sempo at some yeah. point. I think that's when I added him to my naughty list and he never made, quite made it back off. But he kept running on good ground back then. Yeah. And I, I kept looking at him thinking, oh, I don't know whether he, whether he quite wants it this quick or he doesn't. And then obviously when he was hurdling... I mean, most of last season was pretty bad ground anyway. Um, the only time he ever encountered like some better ground was in that Slaney novice's head of high Denver, and it didn't really seem to make any sort of balance to him. But he won that nav and chase, like you say, with a big getaway. That was on soft ground. Yeah. So I would say more than anything, he's go on, go on the lot, wouldn't he? So I don't think you've got any worries about that. I don't think you've got any worries about the trip. Like you say, he's won at the distance. And although he doesn't, he didn't really stay in that point. I think he fell, didn't he, with Ryan Danny de Vray. Mm -hmm. But he's got, he's got that extra bit of stamina. Like we know, he'll stay a little bit further than the plate. Mate, I think that's a decent show. What price was he? Thirty-three to one. Well, he was. I hope he still is. He, he was. I can't go on us check because they, they took it down on the book. He was thirty-three to one half an hour ago. So let's have a job. Just see if we can get a double check on there. So yeah, that's their two stacks for the week. So mine's more high ed for the for temps at 20 and Matt's is, Matt's is a great shout. Conflated for the Brown Advisory stable plate. Um, odds checker was going a little bit funny earlier so we'll see if I can so a lot. find anything. Yeah, you can still, yeah. Well, 33s yeah. with William Hilliers, conflated. And he's a hell of a lot short with most other bookmakers. Massively short with other bookies. Oh, well, you could have the 33s, William Hill. Who cares? Um, kind of guy I am. Anywho, that's the two selections for this week. Like I say, we've got probably six weeks worth of decent, decent racing. There'll be clues coming up. The next few weekends as well, they're going to be light and fluffy, and then we're going to get into Festival Trials Day. We're going to get into the Dublin Racing Festival. Then there'll be Kempton, the Adonis Meet, and the Dove Cut. Like, it's exciting now, but we're definitely at a position now where we probably 
we should have a good gauge on races or what we think is going to happen with them. Entries for the big hurdle races were today, the 12th. So we'll find out about them in the next couple of days. So we'll find out about the stayers, the mares, the champion hurdle. Um, I want to say there's one more. Um, but it's even this little thing about, like, if Benny gets an entry in the stairs hurdle, whereas I don't think she will, or hopefully she won't, and then we'll just see some horses that are entered in different places. Like, it'll just be a few clues for the sake of it. Obviously, more bookmakers are going non-mono no bet now, so that's making a big difference to the prices that we're potentially been able to put up and the value, inverted commas, obviously, it's all down to individual perception. So with, like, this now, the fact that 33 is just with one bookie for Matt's one, said before at the start we were going to try and do it if it was with multiple bookmakers we ain't going to be able to afford that luxury now so I'm not going to be prepared to say to Matt you can only have the 16s that it is with the non one no bet people obviously that is your choice of how you want to play it we'll stick it up as the 33s win for the stable play um, unless we specifically state a bet is non one money back then all of ours will just be classed as anti-post rules apply and in an instance like this where it's twice the price Matt's made such a strong case. When I send this over to Gordo, he'll be like, oh, Matt, you know, stop telling everyone. Quiet down, mate. But they're definitely going to run them in there, aren't they? So, uh, yeah, it's the way that it is. I'll stick the final selections up again at the end of this video. If anyone's made it this long, congratulations. You've won a £10 free bet. Um, read the selections at the end if you want. You can message me. Interested with your comments again below, like what you always put in, guys, because it's really nice to see other people talking horses. Um, yeah, so we'll be back next week for the next episode. Thank you for your support. Good night.